health problems as we see them happen because of some reason. The, the conversation I want to have with you right now has to do with how do we classify and how do we get here? Whether you end up with a heart disease or a runny nose or a cancer, they may look very different at, by the symptoms, but the causes are always one of the four that I'm going to talk about. Other than genetics, your genetics are unchangeable, but I want to talk about things that you can do something about and make a difference. And these are toxicity, malnutrition, stagnation, and trauma. So let's start one at a time. Toxicity is the presence of things in your body that should not be there. And you may have them already accumulated and they could be coming in every day in the environment. We are now living in an industrial age. And with the industrial age came first burning of coal, then burning of petroleum, then burning of gas, then invention of plastics, then invention of fertilizers, and then also telegraph, radio, television, Wi-Fi. All of these things are coming in with the industrial age. And interestingly, toxicity accumulates. It doesn't go anywhere. We are living on planet Earth. We are the fish in the aquarium that is the whole planet. So when the fish poops into the aquarium, all the other fish will know about it. Well, likewise, when you put a billion tons of glyphosate on your field in North America, it spreads. Everybody knows about it. And so these problems are rising. We used to have much less problem when I was a child back in the 1950s than we are having now in the 2020s. And people born recently are more toxic than the people who were born 100 years ago. The toxicity consists of heavy metals like lead, mercury, cadmium, uranium, arsenic, stuff like that, all of which are disruptors of normal bodily function. Uh, others are volatile organic compounds, things like dry cleaning fluids, uh, rocket fuel additives, and PFOAs like Teflon and BPH and BPAs, which are in plastics. All of these things get into your body and shouldn't be there. And we need to get them out because these are the blocking factors that are preventing the homeostatic balance that your body tries to achieve from being achieved. When you block a normal expression, no chance of really getting right. And so it's really important that you understand this, that stopping the blocking of the normal function is what we need. We need to get those toxins out and we also need to stop the flow of them in. So that's one. Two is malnutrition. That means lacking the nutrients that should be in your body and aren't. Now this time, again, we have the industrial age coming to rescue, well, maybe to damage because we now have the large agricultural businesses growing food-like substances on foil, soils that have been depleted using fertilizers that make the food look great, grow up fast, but be lacking in nutrients. The second problem we have is foods that are rich in calories, but poor in nutrition. When you eat stuff that's got a lot of grain to it, which would be wheat, rye, barley, corn, soy, rice, all of these are easy to grow, relatively easy to grow, and they provide a lot of energy, but they do not provide a lot of nutrition. Nutrition is found in plants like onions and uh, I don't know, trying to think of all the vegetables like broccoli, cabbage, and green pepper. They are more nutritionally dense than a high calorie thing like a kernel of wheat or flour made from that. And further to that, herbs, which are 
even more concentrated, are very much required. So these are the pigments, the polyphenols, the terpenes, and all of those special chemicals that you will hear about. All the stuff other than macronutrients, which are fats, proteins, and carbohydrates. So malnutrition travels on having food that's either too rich in calories relative to the nutrients present, or too poor in mineralization because they're grown on poor soils, or just poorly combined choices that you make. The third category is stagnation. We humans are meant to be living in a dynamic balance with our environment. We inhale and exhale. You cannot just inhale and keep on inhaling. You would blow up as a balloon. And you cannot just keep exhaling or excreting because you will empty yourself out and nothing comes in. That's it. So anyway, dynamic balance as opposed to static balance. Static balance is something like a marble statue. It's beautifully formed. It's perfect, but it doesn't move. There's no life in it. Life requires interchange and interaction with the environment. Stagnation is the opposite of that. A good example of stagnating water body would be a swamp. You may remember, it stinks, it putrid, and it's muddy, and it's not a picture of health. It's a system that works, but it works on decomposition. We humans are not supposed to be decomposing. We're supposed to be dynamically interacting with the environment. For that, you need movement. Movement's required. Your heart is uh, pushing the blood through the blood system, but your lymph, all the extracellular fluids, do not have their own pump. They, they only move when you move. So walking, bouncing, uh, running, jogging, all of the movements that are moving your body parts against gravity are uh, helping the body to move. Let's go back to the aquarium. If in your aquarium you do not have a filter and a pump, it doesn't take very long for the water to stagnate and rot and go swampy. And your fish will be soon very unhealthy. Think about this. If you have unhealthy fish in the aquarium, do you inoculate the fish or do you change the water in the aquarium? Important point to remember. Stagnation is the enemy because when things don't move, function goes away. Importantly, for example, is exercise. Your muscles will deteriorate, will shrink, and your bones will deteriorate and lose mineralization if there's not enough stress put on you. You have to exercise, otherwise use it or lose it. The fourth one is trauma. We lump here everything that's not visible, stuff that happens and is stored in your emotional body or in the fluids of your body. You may have had this experience where you go for a massage and a body part gets worked on and all of a sudden you're overcome with a release of an emotion. You may be even crying or something like that without understanding of what's being released. A lot of our experiences, especially the emotional injuries, are stored in the water, in the soft tissues of our body. And that has to be dealt with. I don't have a pill for that. I need to be helping you to work out these stored injuries. And there are several techniques that, that we're aware of, like, for example, EFT, emotional freedom technique, also known as tapping, or body talk, or quantum healing, or emotion code, and other techniques that help us release the... Um, stored emotional injuries, and they should be released. We also have a gadget that we can talk about later that sends a signal to your autonomic nervous system with its two branches 
fight or flight, rest and repair. And the repair side is the one that allows you to fix your body. And we're sending a message to the autonomic nervous system that says, heal, repair, relax. And when we do that, that's a subconscious wave that your body reacts to without you really understanding why. And you start repairing at a rate faster than you would otherwise. One last thing on this invisible trauma is EMF, which is electromagnetic frequencies or EMR, electromagnetic radiation. This stuff is mainly radio waves and Wi-Fi and cell towers. So we used to call it like G3, that's generation three and four. G4 comes in at about five megahertz, pardon me, gigahertz. 5G now comes in between 10 and 60 gigahertz. The gigahertz tells you that the frequency is shorter or the, the wave length is shorter, I should say. The shorter the wave, the more damage it does, but the less easy it is to penetrate farther. So the 5G towers or antennas have to be spaced very closely, like 100 meters apart, 300 feet or so. What it's doing is just putting us into an aquarium. That's another metaphor for it, where the aquarium is getting filled with these frequencies. The important point of that is the following. It's called voltage gated calcium channel. These frequencies trigger a reaction in your cells where this voltage created by the EMF is triggering a flooding of the cell with calcium, which is the signaling atom, no, ion, for uh, fight or flight, the sympathetic side of your autonomic nervous system, meaning fight or flight. When you're, when you're in stress, you cannot repair, so you wear faster. So when you're in an electromagnetic field, you tend to be more tense, more nervous, more anxious, and have all kinds of problems with your health. We need to know about this, act on it, and be aware. What we have done is put together a report that we want you to have access to. So when you type in, I want it, we'll send it to you. Go ahead, type it in.